site. The plastic buckets, one of which I am holding, goes to Kelly Thompson. And then my right side pocket is my new car fund. <laughs> All checks can be written to Lakeview Lutheran Church, except the new car fund. I prefer that to Dean Kurtz. <laughs> so, I think, oh, and then let me remind you that um, Thanksgiving dinner's on the way. We're expecting about 300 people for that, like usual. So take a look at page six and tell us how you can help. Make sure that that dinner comes off very well. And then here's the back page of the uh, announcements today, page eight. Um, very quickly, we have to have the poinsettia order in. December 5th, it's right around the corner. We also are looking for money to purchase the evergreen trees, so if you're interested in doing that, fill that out, drop those things in the offering plate this morning or next week. Um, I think that's all, Linda. Anything else you want to say? You sure? The yeah. nursery's open. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Melissa. I announced that last week. The nursery is open, it's up and running. So if you are sitting with a rowdy, young child or Al Wessel, you can, <laughs> you can take them down to the nursery. We'll be open during the 10.30 service um, each Sunday morning. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that. John? Blood drive yep, we got that all covered. The blood drive's all been announced. And today, oh yeah, we got, I missed a, a slide here. Um, Nicholas? Yeah. Um, this is uh, being lost in the corn maze at Trinan uh, Family Farm, the high school youth, one of, one of the small groups. Darian's pointing in that direction. Nicholas is saying, no way. Um, Seth is saying, I think we should go this way. And Kelly's saying, please get me the heck out of here. <laughs> so a reminder that high school youth gathered today at 4 p.m., 4 p.m. here at church for pizza and beverages and devotions and games in East Hall. Next slide. Um, Heidi, do snap. Our, our stewardship presentation today um, comes from our partner, the Lakeview Food Pantry. And Heidi Doosnap has been a long-term active volunteer in the Lakeview Food Pantry, along with her husband, Steve, and their daughter, Tasha. And Tasha is coming forward to share her food pantry experiences right now in her skirt and boots. Heidi, is, Heidi um, grew up in this congregation. She was actually baptized here and confirmed here, and I officiated at her wedding. And she wants me to do her funeral someday. <laughs> and baptize Tasha? Wow, oh, you owe me a lot. <laughs> it's priceless. It's priceless. <laughs> Let's uh, thank Heidi for her work in the funeral. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming member here at the church um, and I'm here to talk about the church's uh, food pantry. Um, it's something that Steve and I had uh, chose to do together to give back to the community and we're very appreciative to, for that opportunity to do that. Um, there's several things to go out for the church's food pantry. Um, the congregation for allows, allowing us to house the pantry in the church. And another thanks goes out to the congregation for supporting us by donating food items and money to the pantry. And another thanks goes out to the office staff, Tom, Pastor, Dean, and any office volunteers. The congregation may not know that we are a referral pantry, and because of that, patrons must call into the church on Monday mornings between 9 and 11 to be put on a list to be served, and we accept between 20 and 25 families every Monday here at the church at the food pantry. Um, our food for distribution comes from all kinds of different resources, from Lakeview donations, from neighbor, neighborhood food drives, the Second Harvest Food Bank, from government food um, program, and from purchases made at local stores. There are about 26 volunteers who help us at the pantry, and uh, some of the volunteers work on pantry night, and then others help to stack and stock the pantry and shop to pick up food for it. Um, Randy Matthews is the coordinator of the food pantry, and um, she provided me some, some numbers which I found, found interesting and, and really hit home for me. Um, the number of households in 2010 was between 750 and 800 households. Individuals alone were between 2,500 and 2,600 individuals in 2010. And most of the households have one or more persons working, but at 
are still unable to purchase enough food to keep their families from being hungry, and about 15 to 20 percent have no income at all. That one hit home for me um, hard, <laughs> just for the fact that uh, Steve and I are both full-time working parents. Our, we need both incomes, and if one of us were to lose a job, it's nice to know that we have a resource out there that we can tap into if needed. Because that could easily be us. We never know from day to day what can happen. Uh, numbers for 2011 will be equal or most probably be higher than that um, this year. And uh, it's amazing that the other number that Randy gave me is that this pantry has been in operation for at least 25 years and has provided a great service for the north side and the surrounding areas. So just some numbers to share with you and um, to let you know a little bit more about the food pantry and that it's, it's a great service that the church provides. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> what is my major number of because we authorize stewardship dollars and our time and talent, we can continue to operate that food pantry and that we hope to be able to do that. I'm going to invite you to rise as we continue, as we begin our worship this morning. Grace and peace from our God and Father, hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And you may remain standing as we sing the opening. and wisdom, 
and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as Al comes forward for the week. Our first reading is from Zephani, uh, chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. The Lord has consecrated the guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their drapes. Those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will the Lord do harm. Our wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there, that day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty embattlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the, in the fire of the Lord's passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and terrible end, the Lord will make all the inhabitants of the earth. Our second reading is from chapter 1 of Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, do, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us all not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of hope and salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. From the 25th book of St. Matthew. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and trusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off and at once traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received just one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. 
Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your kingdom. And the one and the, and, and the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you have handed over the two to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have with it what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was mine plus interest. So with the talent he gave him, and gave it to another, the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and then will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Uh, Pastor Kirst um, invited me to preach today, or share the message with you today. And uh, and I know why. <laughs> the, the tone of this uh, text today presents some pretty big challenges. Uh, I'm going to turn this one loose on Kelly. So the title of uh, this message today, Discover Your, your Gifts. Looking back at an earlier segment of Matthew, the parable of the sower, you will, find, you will find or discover this verse. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. This sounds sound familiar? So repeat. It occurs in today's text. I want to offer some other observations about the text today. The term slave uh, the Greek, um, biblical Greek for that is doulos. This also means servant. And in the context of that time, being a slave or a servant wasn't such a bad thing. It was uh, being gainfully employed. And that particular community actually held it in more in higher regard than most of the other neighbors. So try to think of the term slave as faithful servant. Talents, a very large sum of money, 20 years of income actually. Um, give me 20 years of income, I'll live on the interest alone. <laughs> um, and then we talk about abundance. You realize and, that Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding celebration of Canaan. That, that's equivalent to 500 bottles of wine. That's one heck of a party. But Pastor Kurt says that Kevin, you wouldn't have trouble with that here. <laughs> we are Lutheran, you know. The parable of the sower, Jesus refers to several different soil conditions in which the sower plants seed and various results. On one extreme, the birds eat the seed and then there's absolutely no harvest. On the other extreme, a bountiful harvest, abundant fruit. In the parable of the talents, today's text, there are three different slaves who act on their abundant gifts differently. Do nothing, do something, or do more. However, within the larger context of the Matthew, the Matthew narrative, 
calling of the twelve disciples happens between these two texts. Jesus teaches, Jesus calls, and then Jesus expects action before Jesus will come back. In other words, the message of these texts can be summarized as this. Some people choose to explore God's sacred gift of understanding, obedience, and social justice, feeding a cycle of growth and restoration. Others will choose not to perpetuate a cycle of misunderstanding, disobedience, and injustice. However, I do want to be clear that this scripture is misrepresented and misused oftentimes. It is not about works righteousness. We are not capable of saving ourselves through our works. Our salvation is tied to Jesus Christ's life, his teaching, and his death, his passion, not in what we can do. Our res thankful response is, is what's required of us and asked of us, this gift of unconditional grace. We are called to to this proactive response in God's bountiful blessing he gives to us. So, how might the, these gospel texts apply to us today? God has abundantly blessed us in service. God, is, God has given us the free will to act, and we choose on how we act these blessings. Unfortunately, I do not think uh, it is easy to, for us to recognize our gifts as it was for these servants, and then cut your big check. Do you see, but do not see? Do you hear, but you do not understand? At this time, I'd like to share a little bit about my journey with you, a discovery of a gift. This uh, will sound familiar to probably most all of you since you're Madison, from Madison. I was standing on a corner in downtown Madison watching the cathedral burn by fire lit by a homeless man seeking some cheap communion wine. I was an architect on the project to replace that spire, a project that would eventually win several design awards. I was speechless, I was confused and really scared. I feared that I had made some fundamental mistake in design to either cause the problem or at least make it worse. At the time, there wasn't, we didn't know how that fire had started. In the days on that corner, I ran into the parish of the business administrator. Very strong person. We grew in relationship with each other through a very complicated process of a construction process, project. Mutual respect and admiration for each other. She turned to me, came right to me, and cried on my shoulder. Not a word was spoken. However, the presence of our loving Jesus Christ was there amongst us. I believe that day I discovered a gift. A gift that I probably buried. A gift of pastoral care to people in need, a gift that was discovered during a time of tragedy, a moment that my attention was turned away from my personal concerns to a neighbor in need. Not a change for me, but an affirming glimpse of who God intended for me. I am blessed to be here with you today, sharing the gospel in a community that focuses on outreach, outreach ministries. Habitat for Humanity, the Lake Food Pantry, the Road Home Program in Dayton County, Lutheran Disaster Relief, to name a few. Whether it is these or any other ministries, I encourage you all to seek out these opportunities for growth, not only in your understanding of God's Word, but in proactive response to each other. Whether it is, uh, it is really about the purpose of your activities that matters. For what or who is your purpose? 
Your response fosters growth in your personal relationships with God as expressed in the parable of the sowers. Affirming who God created you to be. Your response also fosters growth in your community as expressed in the parable of the talents. Giving us a glimpse of God's restorative power in community. The joy of our master for all. Heck, you may discover another gift that you didn't know you had. Amen. that people have in this world. 
We ask you to use us to respond to those needs which include hunger, homelessness, depression, and medical care. We also pray to be moved so that we will work to advocate life void of war, violence, terrorism, bigotry, and hatred. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, as we continue to celebrate stewardship in this place, we give thanks for our food pantry and for all those who volunteer in it and who provide food and financial support to it. We pray that we will be able to continue this important ministry at Lakeview. Excite our community today as we begin our plans for Thanksgiving dinner. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, be with all people who are incarcerated. Give them hearts of repentance and give us hearts of forgiveness. Change the conditions of their lives that prevent them from making wise decisions. Change us so that we can support them and help them know that God does not abandon even the prisoner. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we give thanks for our seminaries and we lift to you this morning Wartburg Theological Seminary. Guide professors and instructors to be wise and truthful. Bring excitement and new ways of understanding to all students, particularly to Kelly. Affirm his calling. Keep him and his family safe. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Holy God, give hope and consolation to all who mourn this day, including Bishop Bruce Burnside and his family as they grieve the death of Cynthia. Give comfort and healing peace to all those who struggle with health, including Barb Severson, Lori Pienkowski, Edward Knudsen, Blanche Harris, Bill Bakken, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of that Lord be with you all. Yes. Take a moment and share God's peace with each other.
come and eat, the meal is ready. I would ask five servers to kneel at the rail. The congregation may be seated. surpasses all our understanding. Guard you and protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may remain singing as we sing the final. Bishop Burnside's wife, go in peace and serve the Lord.